Joining us now with more on this uh, gnarly topic is Dean Baker. He's co-director at the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Dean, the president says he wants to end Freddie and Fannie, or at least their business model, and he says private capital should be the backbone of the housing market. You agree? Well, it's kind of a mixed story here because he wants private capital. In fact, private capital is there in the sense that who buys the mortgage-backed securities? Obviously, that's private capital. But he wants private capital to be issuing the mortgage-backed securities, which is what we had, you know, during the peak of the bubble. You know, Citigroup and Goldman Sachs were issuing mortgage-backed securities. But this time, they'll actually be guaranteed by the government. So he doesn't want to get the government out. He still wants the government to guarantee the, mo the mortgage-backed securities with some first-dollar payments, first-dollar losses absorbed by the issuers and investors. So it's a mixed bag. And to my mind, it's really problematic because you get a lot of moral hazard issues here with private profit, government risk. Dean, what does all of this mean to the person who's uh, looking to get a mortgage? Uh, is this going to be uh, more expensive? Is it going to be uh, more available? I mean, you know, what, what does it all mean? It virtually, it virtually guaranteed to be somewhat more expensive. I mean, in your introduction, you were saying that the private market has virtually disappeared. That's because they can't compete with Fannie and Freddie. It's not as though someone wants to issue a mortgage-backed security today. They can't go right out there and do it. But they can't do it in a way that will compete with Fannie and Freddie. So if we get Fannie and Freddie out, we're going to see higher costs because we know it. Let's say it's Goldman Sachs issuing it. They're making a profit on it. They have highly paid executives. All those people want money. That's going to add to the cost of mortgages. There are an awful lot of people, I suspect, who would say that uh, the government really has no role or no rightful role in the mortgage market at all, either, either standing behind companies as it did implicitly and then factually in the case of Freddie and family, Fannie or... Uh, it, to guarantee mortgage-backed securities at all. What do you say to that? Why should the government be involved in subsidizing or standing behind the mortgage market at all? Well, I think it's a very good question. What I'd say is that the government can be very efficient in creating a secondary market, which we know from the history dating back to the early days of Fannie Mae, we know from the present, as government companies. When you get this mixed story with a government guarantee, I think in many ways you have the worst of all worlds. I think it would make much more sense, in fact, to say just leave it to the private sector. And we know it can do it. I mean, we have the jumbo market. You were talking about that a moment ago. So it's not as though we wouldn't have mortgages and even 30-year fixed rate mortgages. People would pay a little bit more for them. So basically, I see this as a story as the government subsidizing mortgage-backed securities. I just can't really see how that's good public policy. We want to subsidize home ownership, maybe. Mortgage-backed securities, a little hard to see. As you heard in our report, uh, you know, one of the people that Diana interviewed said it's now or never to put this overhaul through. Will it happen? Do you think that uh, we're going to get some kind of, uh, you know, reform of uh, Fannie and Freddie? If I had to take a bet, I'd say no, because the details, as you noted, are very complicated, and I hope people ask the good questions. I don't think they have a plan that gets rid of the moral hazard problem. That's what everyone has to ask about. We don't want the government taking the risk so that private banks could profit, as has happened in the past. All right, Dean Baker, thank you very much. Dean is with the Center for Economic and Policy Research.